Welcome to the Father State. I am Destiny Peterson. Don't forget to hit the like button and notification bell. I have with me today Sister Rose Picotti. She is a member of the Daughter of St. Paul's and director of Pauline Center for Media Study. Sister Rose, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. I absolutely appreciate it. How are you dealing with all this virus stuff that's happening right now? Well, it's kind of surreal, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I live in a community with uh, six other sisters, but I'm kind of self-isolating because I have health issues. So we're all kind of keeping our social distance. Amazing, but no one in the order has been reported as having it or been sick or anything, right? No, we have about 12 communities here in the U.S. and Canada, and everyone is fine. Oh, Thank good. God. I'm so, so glad. Far. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Hopefully it'll get better before it gets worse rather than getting worse. Yeah. So um, I don't know a lot about the Catholic religion and all that because, I, you know, I grew up as a Christian, a Baptist Christian. So I'm not sure about it. How long, have, how did you become a nun? Uh, what made you, how do a, a woman become a nun? What made you decide to become one? Well, I was brought up Catholic, but you don't, you know, people, women become Catholic at different ages and you feel a call to follow Christ more closely as in his life as being poor, chaste and obedient. And we live that life in community in the church and we make vows to follow Christ more closely. And it's a call. It's something you feel. And when you're it's a, a living out of your baptism, actually, because the our baptism is a call and a vocation. So as we live to follow Christ more closely according to the Gospels, and as St. Paul, of course, and the New Testament wrote about Jesus, um, we try to, to serve others in some capacity. And so our work in the church is to communicate God's love using the media, the social communication. And so we have publishing houses around the world and we have editorial houses and Catholic bookstores where anybody can come, everybody's welcome. And we have a significant online presence. And at what age did you become a nun? Well, I actually entered when we still had a high school back in the 1960s. I was a junior in high school. And so I was almost 16 years old. Amazing. But you, you spend a year as in, if you finish high school, you go to college and then you do your religious training. And so it was 11 years, well, it was five years before I made first vows and another six years before I made final vows. Really? So we get more preparation for a life of uh, chastity than young people do who are getting married <laughs> yeah. and who, you know, have a really a kind of tougher life in many ways. Amazing. So um, when you say a calling, you believe that God call you to be a nun. Yes. Amazing. I didn't know that. And you, you, it's an impulse that you feel. Um, I had, I think I first thought about it when I was about 11 years old. I didn't go to Catholic school, but there were nuns at our church. And I read this book written by mothers of nuns telling about their daughters who wanted to become, who became sisters. And I was only 11, but I was so kind of inspired and curious. And then as I got older, and, and you know, it was the 1960s. So I think service and doing something to help the world become a better place. It was, you know, the Vietnam was, you know, was just exploding everywhere. Right. And, and it was so much social upheaval that I just felt that, and this is another thing that I felt though, there was so much change and upheaval and how you could be happy one day and the next day, God only knows what would happen. And I said, you know, the only constant in life is God. God is the only one who doesn't change. And so it's all of that kind of went into the idea that maybe God is calling me to follow him more closely as a Catholic sister. So that's why I did. That's Amazing. Why I did so you became a nun at 16. And from that point forward, have you been living in that nun surrounding? In a, a convent, a community. Yes. Wow. Um, I've lived in several different communities of our of our congregation, our institute. Right. We call it an institute or a congregation. And I've lived in New York, Boston, Charleston, South Carolina, St. Louis, London, England, Guam, 
So, and Amazing. then I've been here in LA for 17 years now. So are you from, where are you from? Was born in Virginia. Really? My dad was in the military. And then I, uh, when I was just a baby, we moved to San Diego. Right so I grew on. up in San Diego. And so as a teenager, you missed the fun of life. You know, you didn't get a chance to party, drink, do pot, <laughs> uh, <laughs> have sex. And That's interesting. Uh, no, I, I missed out on the pot. I did. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and the drinking. Uh, however, you know, once you come of age in the community, you know, we have wine, we have beer. So it's not like uh, we are deprived in that way. We don't oh. smoke, though. We you save know. a lot of money and health by not smoking. <laughs> so uh, we don't do that. But um, we know how to have a good time the way nuns have a good time. But so you, it's okay. Did you ever get drunk off the beer in the way? No, <laughs> not well, yet. <laughs> you haven't parted until you get drunk with the wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, at, when I'm sometimes with my family, uh, you know, it may come to uh, a certain point, but I always know when to say it's enough. Right. Yeah. So was there ever a part of you that wish you had been married with children and a family at any point in life? Did you ever think about that or want that? Sure. Because that's, you know, that's a normal part of being a human being. Yeah. So, of course. But um, I I had a lot of younger brothers and sisters. So one time my mother and I were driving by the church in San Diego, St. Rita's Church, and there was a wedding coming out. And my mother said to me, just think. Someday that's going to be you. Right. And I just answered her, no, it's not. <laughs> and she said, what? Don't you want to get married and have kids? And I said, why? I already raised yours. <laughs> that's right. But, but it just came out of me. It wasn't, you know, I, I didn't think about it. But I, I really spent a lot of time from the age of seven taking care of younger siblings. And I wanted to do something else with my life. Yeah. Uh, I, I, always, I often think my mother was a little disappointed in her life. And I didn't, I didn't see her as a really happy person. So I didn't see myself doing what she did. Right. I needed, and I wanted to do something that was meaningful. That was very important to me. And it's not that marriage and kids isn't meaningful. Right. I think it had to go somewhere different than... I just felt called to a different path. So were you raised by your father and mother? Yes. And who were you closest to, your father or your mother? My grandmother. Your grandmother? <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> my grandmother to me was, she lived, She and my step-grandfather lived right in front of us. So she was like a rock. Yeah. Because, you know, after I entered, two years after I entered the convent, my dad had left the Navy after 24 years and, and then the family moved up, went to Northern California. And, you know, my dad hadn't been around very much. And so my parents, their marriage failed. Yeah. And um, so that was uh, when I was about 18 or so when that happened. And But I was away from home already. Right. And, uh, but still, you still feel it. Yeah. You still feel that. And yeah. so my grandmother still remained a rock for me. So what closing, I was close to my I was close to both my parents. My dad was not a Catholic. Well, my, only my mom was, but, um, but I, I, I was close to both of them, but in different ways, right. I guess I put it that way. Yeah. yeah. And so when you, uh, you say you have many brothers and sisters, how many were there or are there? Eight of us all together. And were you, the, are you the oldest? Second oldest, but oldest girl. Oh, I see. That's why your mother had you helping raise the kids then, huh? Y yeah. That's what, that was it. <laughs> it was fun at first when right. I was seven, right? I know. <laughs> it's it hard last. on kids, though, to have to raise kids because it's hard enough for parents to do it. But when they turn it over to the sibling to raise their kids, it's not a good thing. Well, I say raise, but basically it was like all my breathing hours at home was taking care of them. Right. You know. Amazing. Step, you know, kind of corralling them making sure they didn't run into the street. 
<laughs> Amazing. Because there was there were the last three, two were twins, and one was just a year older. So it was like triplets. Wow. Yeah. Well, no wonder you all, went and became a nun. I don't blame you. Yeah. And they were all like going in different directions at the same time. Yeah. They were, they were cute. I'll give you that. <laughs> they were very cute. And I missed them terribly when I entered the convent. But um yeah, they were <laughs> they were a handful. Was your mother disappointed when you became a nun? No, she actually supported it. And how about I think your father? My dad was my dad was the one who had a harder time of it. Oh, he did. He didn't want mm -hmm. you to become a nun. Wait, because he didn't understand. See, he wasn't he wasn't religious at all. Oh, I see. So, yeah, he didn't really understand. But after my parents split up, he wrote to me every week from 1969-1970 until he died in 1978 wow. of, of a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. He died very suddenly of a brain tumor. So the two of you were close? Very close. Uh, you know, we wrote back and forth every week. Right on. Yeah. Uh, what do Catholics believe? Well, are you familiar with the Apostles' Creed? No, I'm not. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator uh, of heaven. Oh, and yeah, earth. I've heard that, yes. Well, every Christian... Every Christian believes in the Apostles' Creed and in the Nicene Creed, which is a little bit slightly more elaborated version. If Because we believe in the Trinity, we believe that Jesus Christ is God, we be, true God and true man. So it's the creed that makes us all Christians. And the Catholic Church is was the one who preserved the beliefs of the early church from the very beginning because... Jesus said, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And that rock has been there in an unbroken line, succession since St. Peter. And so we have had that creed, that belief that makes us all Christians from the very beginning. And so, that's what makes us Christians. So the Catholic, do the Catholic believe what the Christians believe? Because Catholics and my kind of Christians are not the same, right? Well, okay, so here's, here's the difference. We are all Christians because we believe that Jesus Christ is true God and true man. That's what makes us Christian. That's why Mormons are not Christians. Jehovah Witnesses are not Christians. They might believe in Jesus, but they don't believe in his, that he is true God and true man, which is what sets Christians apart from other um, other sects or religions or how or denominations, no, not even denom denominations, because Christians are, that's why we believe in the ecumenical movement. Ecumenical means church. Uh, interfaith means you take the non-Christian religions such as Judaism and um, the Islam. Those, we all, we all are monotheistic. We believe in one true God. But Christians believe in the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what makes us Christians. Where we have, have separated was about, you know, the 15th century, actually a little bit before that. Um, there was, a, you know, Martin Luther and a few others who broke away from the authority of the Pope right. as the head of the church and also the teacher of the church. So... We believe that the sources of sacred scripture are the sources of, of, um, of our belief are sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which is held by the teaching authority of the Pope given to the Pope through St. Peter by Jesus. And that has been carried through. So uh, as this deposit of faith that we come to a deeper understanding of, but that essentially doesn't change. And so it's, it's the authority, the teaching authority of the Pope, because other Christians can kind of, you can open up a, a storefront church anywhere and any preacher can just start teaching right. the Bible or whatever they want. Yeah. But how do I know what, by what authority do you teach? And how do I know what you say that I'm really forgiven? The Catholic church says, if I say you are forgiven, you are forgiven because of the seven sacraments. No other church can claim that. The amazing. Catholic Church can. That's amazing. And if yeah, you guys it's, it's believe that, if you guys believe that um, 
Jesus is God, how do you explain Jesus when he said, my father sent me, uh, it's because of my father that you can do this and that. Uh, the people were worshiping him at one time, and he said, no, don't do that. It's not me but the Father in you, and greater work shall you do that as I'm doing. You can do even greater work. How can the people be greater than God? I don't think that's what Jesus meant, and I'm, I'm not actually prepared to do um, exegesis on that particular read. Uh, oh, okay. Scripture citation. But I will tell you this, that the, the four Gospels, you know, that that we have right. are inspired and we, we read them and we try to understand what Jesus is teaching. But at no point does Jesus uh, say that people are greater than God. He does say that greater things will be done in God's name. Right. But Jesus is God, he, the Father, and then the Spirit. Do you have perfect peace within? So... Perfect peace. You know, my grandmother used to ask me, she wasn't Catholic either. Right. And when I was going to enter the convent, she said to me, you know, in the convent, they give you rotten meat to eat. <laughs> now, I don't know what she was reading because she had all her books and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and she didn't want me to enter either. But she used to write to me and she would say, are you happy? Are you happy? And I go, what does that mean? Are you happy? Is, I think happiness is overrated. But do I find meaning in my life? And yes, I do. And because I have meaning in my life, I have peace. Yeah, perfect peace within. Now, perfect peace is, I don't know if I would call it perfect, because perfect means nothing is missing, right? Right. So is I... I feel like I have everything I need to follow Jesus more closely in my life. But I have this, I have the grace of the sacraments of the Holy Eucharist and, and reconciliation and, and co being confirmed in the spirit. I, so I, I have all these graces available to me and, um, and I live in a wonderful community of sisters. And uh, so I have great meaning in my life and I feel great peace. So I, I don't know how else to, is perfect peace something to be desired? Because that can make you very anxious. So I think the search for meaning, like Viktor Frankl, who wrote that wonderful book, Man's Search for Meaning, he lived through the Holocaust. He was in Auschwitz. He was a psychologist. And when he came out, he realized that happiness, what is that? I'm happy today, but what about tomorrow? Right. But what, what stays is meaning. If you have so, meaning in your life. Are you saying you, your needs are met, but you don't necessarily have perfect peace within? But I don't, I don't desire perfect peace. You don't? That's, I desire a closer and always closer relationship with Jesus and with my brothers and sisters in the world, you know, in my community and those with whom I share faith. I, I don't focus on just getting perfect peace in myself. I focus on being united with Jesus and in relationship with Jesus and others. So you're, and that happy, gives me great you're, okay, you're okay with the conflict you have sometimes within. O okay. With what? We're having conflict within. Confident? Conflict. Oh, conflict, inner conflict. Well, I think everybody has inner conflict at times. I don't have it ever. You never do. So when they said that you have to keep uh, the social distancing in your family, do you keep it? I was already doing that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, nun, the nuns, you know, we had to work on that. <laughs> keep that six feet difference and no we don't just sit all around the table together we can spread up we should be <laughs> we should be keeping and that was a conflict in the community and it was a conflict that i felt oh yeah but why believe in a god that will not give you perfect peace 
It's not God's job to give me peace. But he said that's why he sent his son, that you may have it's peace. Me, it's my job to seek it. And God grants me peace by working with God and with others. It's something to be, um, see, it, it's not something that you get and then you have forever. It's, it's, it's like a work in process. It's something that comes and goes in the ebb and flow of daily life and in relationships. Oh, so are you saying sometimes you have peace and sometimes you don't because it comes and goes? Well, I'm saying that I have great meaning in my life, and in that I find great peace. Oh, okay. So I have that stable thing. But it's not like I don't have conflicts coming and going or that I don't have deeper questions, too. Some days I have big questions. Like two years ago, my sister had a stroke at 54 years old. And when they did a scan, she had a big tumor. She was almost homeless. And then this happened and she passed away within a week. Amazing. At 54. And so you do ask God those deeper questions of why. But I have faith that even if I can't answer all the mysteries in my life, right. that I can rest those mysteries in God and I can I can look at God and God can look at me and we can have peace in that gaze. A lot of there are a lot of I don't know about in the Catholic circle, but in the Christian circles, there are uh, evangelical. Well, we are Christians, just well, so you know. Right. We're the first Christians. <laughs> right. But okay. in, oh, let me ask you this before I get to this question. The Pope, you guys have a brand new Pope. Well, he's not real new now. What's his name? Pope what? Francis. Francis, yes. Are you disappointed that he's so liberal and weak? Why? Why would you? Why would you call him weak? He seemed to be more of a. I mean, from what I know of the popes that I've been familiar with, he seemed to be more of uh, okay with bad things like um, like ab abortions and things like that. He's not okay with abortion, but he's okay with forgiving people for having them. Oh, but he doesn't believe that women should be having abortions. Of course not. Oh, okay. He's, he's a, he, he, he is not able to make, this is what we believe that when it comes to faith and morals, the Pope cannot make a mistake. So in the, by the content of what we believe, the creeds that, you know, the, the, the content of the creeds. Yes. And then morality, according to the 10 commandments and the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. This Pope lives the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, of feeding the hungry, of teaching those who, who need to be taught, of the physical meeting people's physical needs and their spiritual needs. He's, he's about uh, obeying the commandments. He, he's, See, we can't. I think when we use political terms, when we apply them to the church, right. it, it's really a misdirection, because this is not a political institution. It's not a democracy. Right. I saw the Pope. I don't know if you saw it or not, but the Pope was at a, an event. Well, he was entering some town, I believe, and there was a bunch of people greeting him. You know how they greet the Pope and they want to shake his hand, and there was one woman to shake his hand. And she held it, and he snatched it back and said, get out of it, you know, yelled at her. He was impatient with her. Were you, did you see that? I did. Were you disappointed to see him show a lack of love for that woman? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't there, right? Right. But she wouldn't let go of him. Right. And I the think Pope that— The Pope seemed to, to be ticked. Well, I think he was probably shocked and surprised. I think it was a reaction. And the very next he next day, he apologized in public. Right. And then he met with the woman afterwards. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. Yes, he did. He and he apologized for that. For but were you like seeing that. the Pope be ticked like that in that moment? Were you stunned or surprised? What did you think? Oh my God, the Pope is ticked. No, what I thought was the Pope was a human. <laughs> he's a human being. Oh, and he reacted like anybody would. And imagine how many when he puts himself out there, everybody's grabbing at him. And this what right. this, this woman wouldn't let go. And he was trying gracefully to withdraw, extract his hand and she wouldn't let go. And he was like, you know, it just he had a moment. <laughs> you know what? He's 84 years old. He's allowed to have a moment. 
And so, but when in that in that very moment, before you understood the way you understand it now, when you first saw it, were you like, "Oh my God, what's wrong with the Pope?" Well, the first thing I said was, "Oh my, what's going on?" Because <laughs> you want to get the big, you you want to find out what's really right. going on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes optics, we see optics and we interpret them, and we don't really know what the context is. Right. So. It, but he, when he apologized the next day and explained, and then he met with the woman, I thought that was very, very gentlemanly and Christian of him. There are a lot of women that want to be preachers now and pastors and bishops. Do you personally believe that a woman should be a preacher? Sure, she can preach. But is that from God or that's from her own See, ego? I think I have to go back and ask your question. See, for us, the priesthood is a sacrament right. and it has always been reserved to men in 2000 years of church history. So if you're asking me, do I think a woman should, should be ordained a priest in the, in the Catholic sense of the sacramental? No, sense? but a preacher, you know how you have a lot of in the um, Baptist and evangelical and, the other religion, the other form of religion, you have a lot of women now who are saying that God, God called me to be a preacher. Do you think that's from God or that's from their own ego? I would say that in a Christian community that has women pastors and women right. preachers, that if anybody can go and start a church, as I think some of the... Uh, evangelical uh, communities do, then why not? What would be the rule against it? Do you believe in the order of God? What do you mean by that? God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman and woman over children. No. You don't believe in that? I don't believe men are over women. Why not? Because women will hold up half the sky. We are equal. Equal to what? Man and woman, we were created. But the woman came from the man. You do agree to that, right? Well, that's what it says in Genesis. And do you believe that? Uh huh. I I don't. I'm not sure how how man and woman was created. That's that's. We know that man and women were man and woman were created by God. And we also know that there that that everything in the scriptures is true and some of it really happened, like it says. Right. Some of it follows a different literary genres, and, and I do believe in that. So, yes, we believe that God put a soul in man and woman and created them male and female. He created them, yes. But you, you don't believe that God created the woman from the man? It says it in the scripture very clearly. You don't believe that? I don't disbelieve it. Do you believe it? I don't, I don't just, but let's put, put it this way. I don't really care. But do you believe it? No. You don't believe God created the woman from the man? I believe that that's what the scripture says. But you don't believe the scripture on that? No, but why should I have to believe that? Because it's from because God and I... you are none. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me say I have to believe it. Right. I believe that that's what the scriptures say, and I and I know that we were created by God. But whether we're, whether or not it was like seven days of creation, was that did it really happen on seven days? But sound like you don't believe that part. You believe everything up with that. I, well, you're saying that. But I, you don't. Do you believe it? I ask you. Do you believe that God created the man from him? No, I don't think we create. I don't think it necessarily happened that way. Oh, so you think that scripture is wrong? I don't know that. I think everything is true in right. the scriptures. Except that. Why is that. Let me ask you a question. Why is that so important for you? Because I believe in that order. And, 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 and I noticed that when men and women don't live by that order, and especially when the women take over, the world go to hell in a handbasket. No, I'm sorry. The world is going to hell in a handbasket because the men are in charge. No, sorry. the women are in charge. Men? You need to come out, of, come out of that cover into the real world. It's a mess out there, sister. I go out in the real world all the time. And you don't see the mess that the women are making? No. Oh, you don't? No. Um, so you I don't... see the mess that the men are making. What mess are they making? Oh, let's see. Political, economical. Um, shall I go on? You know, women don't make war. Men make war. 
That's amazing. You say that we uh, the military industrial complex. Yeah, women are involved in it now, but it wasn't started by women. It was started by men. So if you want to go, if you. But how about all the, the family destructions and the bad laws in government? When women take over the schools, become the principals, the vice principals, all hell go loose. Uh, they want daycare. They want to get married. You know, and they are very angry and, and out of control. You don't see that in the women. They should be angry. Why? I agree with them. Why should they be angry? Why, why should they have to go to work and not have daycare? They Because they have a does, husband. They should stay home and raise the children. I'm sorry, but from what I, men leave. Didn't because, you notice? Men yeah, leave. but women run them off. Oh, I'm going to stick up for women here. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So are you going to admit that that's true, though? What? That women run men off because they they don't know how to deal with them. Well, since my relation, I'm vowed to Jesus Christ, right. and I don't have a man in my life. But Jesus I is your man. I can't answer that question from my experience. Right. But so, did your mother run your father off? Yeah, she did. Right. I, I rest my case. But guess what she said? What? She said... It was the biggest mistake of her life, and she regretted it. Did she apologize to your father? Yes, she did. She went and admitted she was wrong? Yes, she did. Good for your mother. Yes, she did. Most women won't admit they're wrong. They have such a big See, ego. See, you say most. Give me a number. Uh, 99 point. I mean, because you're, you're making these huge generalizations. But okay, not all, not all, not all. But 99.9.9, but 9%, but not all. So how many of your listeners are women? Because I think by now you would have run them all off. Why? Because you don't seem to like them very much. I love women. I love uh -huh. I love women. That's why okay. I tell the truth, because I love them. Okay. That makes sense? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you sound like you want to boss women. You don't sound like you want to live with them and work together to make the world a better place. I do. I really want to uh, work with them to help make the world a better place. I want to sh help them to overcome that hell that's in them. Oh, and I think a woman might want to help you overcome the hell that's in you. She can't do that, though, because because of that order of God, women are subject to men as men are subject to God. Do you realize that with that type of a theology a framework that there's no way to move forward. That, that's very stuck. And how do you, what do you do with people who don't fit into that framework? Because I would never submit to that. Oh, how can you believe in God and not submit to that? I believe in God just fine. But how can you believe in him but not follow his natural order? See, I think, I think you have to realize that the natural order might be different than what you think it is. With the natural order of God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, and woman over children. That's the natural order. You can read the scriptures. Read Genesis. It's all over the scriptures. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but no, but I think you have to look to the New Testament, too. But the New Testament is perfect because it's settled that when Christ came, in the Old Testament, it was out of order. But do you remember, though, And so though, he came that, and restored it, and now it's back in order within us. But what if, then you have to accept that slavery is okay, because St. Paul said, slaves, obey your masters. That's right. No, it's not right. It slavery is right. Is not was St. Right. Paul wrong? Yes, he was. He was. He, he was he telling was them how to be slave in the right way to, he, to their masters. No, but slavery, the state of slavery is wrong, just like, Capital punishment is wrong. People have thought it's been okay for all these centuries, but it's wrong and it's wrong in itself. So there are certain things that, that we've grown in our understanding of what Christ's teachings are. But why That's do you I call yourself this uh, Paul church if you don't believe Paul was right? I don't. I think he was wrong when it came to. to so he, Paul wasn't sent by God? <laughs> I think we need to change the subject. Of course he was. He was an apostle. So how could but it be wrong said, then? How could it be wrong? He, but not everything he said was right. Really? Well, I think you better talk I to think, Paul. 
I think that I think that our understanding of Christian teaching has grown from those initial words on a page. And see, that's why when we talk about the teaching authority of the church, when anybody can just go open up their own church and teach whatever they want, well, they it's going to be hard to have Christian unity. But, but, but Christian but, unity comes when we have when we get together to understand the scriptures. When I know, but I'm teaching the order of God, God in Christ, Christ in man, man of a woman, woman, and that's in the scriptures, and you admit it, but yet you don't like that particular one. Nah, I don't want no, that it's one. Not, it's not that I don't like it. You don't it's accept just it. That, it's just that I think that we've come to a better understanding of what that order means. I think 2,000 years ago, as society organized itself and the church organized itself based on a secular world, I think that it made sense, but it doesn't make sense anymore. So how does it not make sense that God created the woman from the man? If, <laughs> if it, that's never changed, one thing they have not changed is that in the scripture, even today, it still says it. But God didn't I, change that at all. I that's think, still the way it is. I think that, see, I believe, you believe in a very literal interpretation of the scripture. And instead, I believed in a more nuanced interpretation as the Catholic Church teaches us. So whether or not um, God took a rib from Adam to make a woman. Not whether or not he did. He did do it. Well, we know that Come God on, created. Sister, let me have it. No. No? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. And all you women listeners out there, <laughs> think about this. If, if you're. You, your husband and wife are meant to go together, to move together, not to be dominated by one or the other. Well, why do you call it dominated? It's a perfect role for the woman to realize she came from the man. So when he does marry her, she come back into his world and she's made whole again. What was well, so he's not made whole. He's made whole when he returned to the father. See that that is such a prehistoric vision of the of a man that I can't, I don't even know where to go with that. Oh, sister, you're disappointing me. I'm so sorry. That's amazing. How would, um, you know the Pope <laughs> Francis, right? Excuse me? Remember Pope Francis, your Pope? Of course, of course. Will you classify him a beta or an alpha male? I don't do that. Is he beta? I, uh, see, I, I, I think he's a very kind man. Oh. I, so I think he works with people. I think that um, I don't know him personally, so how can I even judge that? Oh. Should, I only know from what I read, what I see, what I hear. Should, um, should the church nowadays, should the church allow priests and, and nuns to start getting married if they wanted to? But see, that doesn't make, uh, think about the question you're asking. We take vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. It's a way of life and a calling. It makes no sense for nuns to get married. That's not who we are. We, get, we gave that up so that we can serve other people. But that's really? just because of, that's the only way you could be a nun or yeah, Catholic. You had to make a vow that you would never get married or anything, right? Well, you could, you could, you know, there's no law that says you have to get married. A woman can be single, but she can she she also has to be giving in her life, uh, you know, either helping or serving others. If she decides not to marry, in some way, it's not that we just live turned in on ourselves. We live always in community and in relationship to others. But um, what would what were you saying just before that? That nowadays, since everything has changed and people don't follow the order of the Bible. Shouldn't the church allow men and women to get married and still be a priest oh, or a so nun? Whether, okay, so priests in the Catholic Church, they they were always able to get married before they were ordained a priest. They would they would ordain married men, and that was until about the twelfth century. And then, for different reasons that were had a lot more to do with um, uh, economics, shall we say, they made a law that. Uh, priests would know in the Western church would no longer be married. Amazing. But in the Eastern church, in the Eastern rites of the, of the Christian church, they do get married, but they marry before that they, they're ordained a priest. Are um, you, you're known as a social justice warrior? 
Excuse me? You support social justice? I do. And you are known as a social justice warrior or something, right? You fight for that. Well, what I believe, what I fight for is for human dignity, for the common good. Uh, I, I want people to be in solidarity with one another. I want to care for the earth because the earth is everyone's home. Without the environment, we we have we will have no future so i this is the that's what i mean by social justice oh. is is that to every person he or she gets what is due him or her as a human being that what does that mean dignity. to get what is due what do you mean by that well those would be the basic human rights that would be uh, the right to uh, to uh food to shelter to uh, education to health care to worship freely. These are just some of basic human rights that are- But healthcare and food is not a right because if you don't work, according to the scriptures, if you don't work, you don't eat. And no one, uh, no, no one is entitled to healthcare, am I right? Well, I believe that they are. Why? Well, because society is supposed to take, we're supposed to take care of each other. But not on my dime. Well, it's on everybody's dime. I know that's a problem. This is what it means to, that's why we pay taxes. No, right? I don't pay taxes to feed lazy people. I pay taxes to fix the road, a strong military, and protect the unborn children. Well, I think that life is much more than those three things. But what about taking care of the, what about redlining? What about zoning so that people can't get out of their, their poverty? They can't, they can't take out a loan because of their zip code. No, it's they can't take loan because they don't pay their bills. I, believe me, I know that to be true. And well, it, especially black people. Well, I think that it would be wrong to, to generalize everybody into that. But there no, are I may not know my flower sister. I may not know what a nun is, but I know black people. And black people don't pay bills. Have you ever loaned money to a black person? I don't have any money to loan. Thank God. You better be thanking Jesus for that. You won't get well, it back. But I think I believe I have a much more optimistic view of the human person than that, because oh. I do know a lot of African-Americans and I know a lot of Latinos and a lot of Asians. I have friends from all different places. I and, know them too. Well, I have to say that everybody who can work does. Oh, not in I'm the black about. community. Well, Free, I can't. They want reparations. They want affirmative action. They they hate white people. They well, blame can, white can people. I, can I ask you a question? Yes. So what is the purpose of your show? It's to wake people up, point them back to God. But you don't sound like you, um, that you want to do it together. What does that like, mean? Well, that we walk, we move forward in unity together. In that, solidarity. It doesn't work that way. Remember Christ well, said it? only a few will find the straight and narrow path and the rest will take the wide road that leads to discussion, uh, destruction. I they, think they all ain't going to walk together. That's an, e that's an easy out. And it's just your own personal interpretation. I think. But isn't that in the Bible? Well, it is, but I think you can't just look at one little quote from the Bible here and from the Bible there. You have to take it as a whole. Well, how about when Christ said, if you don't eat, you suffer? I mean, if you don't work, you don't eat. Well, I think he, you know, there's a certain dignity to work, but not everybody is able to work. Don't say that out loud. You're giving the black people reason not to work. Well, the, no, the thing is, what about our veterans who come back from war with PTSD. Well, that's, that's a, that's a legitimate cause. But when you're black, you've been, you're lazy. You've been told that it's the white man's fault. You've been given government for the last 70 years. You don't feel like working when well, you can get it free. Am I right? Well, I'm going to tell you that whoever you're listening to this, that I have a lot more optimism in people than you do. So when, when Christ said, if you don't work, you don't eat, did he lack optimism? No, I'm saying what you're saying about black people. But how about when Christ said it? Well, I think, but he he upheld the dignity of work, of course. I believe that. And to be work, 
to work is to be creative and it's part of who we are as humans it's it's we build things we make things and it's it's very fulfilling to have a job that's why right. the right the right to work and to have a job belongs to everyone i know but with the blacks they don't build they destroy have you noticed whenever they move in, in a neighborhood nice neighborhood the white people leave the blacks turn into a ghetto they're killing one another like now they going north they're having babies out of wet law, abortion up the yang yang. They're not doing the things that Christ wanted them to do. Have you noticed that? So what what is your solution? That they return to Christ. And but what if they need a leg up? What if they need help? What if they need some guidance? Because the last people- thing black people need is uh, help. They have gotten too much help already. That's why they're in the condition. No, I I I have a I guess I just have a different perspective on that. You are a movie reviewer, I read about you. I am. How did you become a movie reviewer? Well, quite by accident, actually. I um, I got, because our work is in media and in spreading God's word using the media, Right. I got a degree in something called media literacy education, which uh-huh. is about being critical thinkers about the media, not negative, but right. to ask questions of the media. And I, I wanted to learn how media functioned, entertainment and information media, not just not just the news, but all of it. So I got my master's degree in education and media studies, and that was in England. And when I came back in 1995, AOL was just starting. That was probably before you were born. And what is but AOL? America Online. Oh, okay. Do you even okay. remember that? No. <laughs> I'm There's black, like two I'm people who still, who still have accounts with AOL. I'm so black as slow as this is. Sorry about that. But in 1995, that's when the internet went public, when everybody could have an email account. So when I came back at the end of uh, 1995 and I, I got an email account and I saw that they had a journal. So I started journaling on movies because I always just liked them. It's not that I wanted to become a movie reviewer. But things progress to such as uh, uh, things just progressed. And I came out here to L.A. and I was reviewing movies even more just as a hobby. And then a magazine called me and asked me if I would like to be their film critic. Right and on. That, That's amazing. So, yeah. That's how and I knew new- one thing lead to another one. You're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, and then a newspaper asked me. Uh, so I write for both a magazine and a newspaper. Are you surprised to, in your writing and movies uh, reviewing, are you surprised to discover how corrupt and evil Hollywood is, the actors and entertainers are? They're not. They're not what? There are some who might be. No, not one... some who might be. There are some who are, right? Well, I have not met them. I, The ones I know all go home at night to be with their families. But they support abortion, so-called same-sex marriage. But when I when I meet them, they don't tell me that's that's not what we talk about. And but you have discovered that they are so corrupt and evil. The entertainment world, right? This is the corruption of the entertainment world. It's money. It's profit. Yeah, that yeah. too. No, it's consumer. It's about consumerism, and it's about it's about capitalism and its profit. Is capitalism it's, a bad thing? It can be. Profit. Is it, is it a bad thing? I. It can be. Are you a socialist? I'm a Christian. Are you a socialist? Well, I don't. I see. I'm. I'm not political. So Are you I a feminist? I'm. I am a. I am a Catholic Christian and all that that believes in. And so I believe in the dignity of woman. Do you support and I believe a, in the dignity support, of man. Do you su- personally support abortion? Oh, gosh, no. How about... Never. Never. Uh, uh, why don't you support abortion? Why would I? Why, you, it's why killing, is that? It's well, what? Well, it's taking the life of an innocent um, being in the womb. But those folks and, in Hollywood love abortions. They have abortions like not to go on nose. How do you know that? They talk about it. They're proud, and they're proud of their abortion. You hear it with the Me Too crowd every, and all those people. Every once in a while you do. Yeah. But you know what? I would rather approach them and talk to them about it rather than um, judge them. 
uh, at from from a place like a conversation like this. But I'm not because, judging them. I'm just discerning. I don't hate but, them for but it. But I have no idea how many women in Hollywood have abortions. Look around. They are everywhere. But you don't know that. Oh, you can look at them. They look beat no, down. But see, you can assume that, but you can't really say that. It's you don't know. And and because I I'm, I can't say what I don't know. I know it's out there. I know there are abortion clinics out there. I do know that. And I, I certainly, I wear this uniform, this habit. I right. I stand for what it stands for. So I stand for life. Is I Planned Parenthood for- evil for support for performing abortion? Are they evil, Planned Parenthood? See, I... I don't call people evil, but people sometimes do evil things. And is that because of the evil spirit that made a home in them? I I think that sometimes they have not had any type of spiritual or Christian formation that what look it looks right to them, so they do it and they don't discern what's right and wrong. And do I, you believe, I do believe that. You believe that the battle is between good and evil, right? I believe in what? that our warfare is between good and evil. We're always struggling between choosing good and choosing evil. And so do you believe that Planned Parenthood killing unborn children in the womb and now they want to do it up to the ninth month. And even oh, if the baby yeah, come out alive, more, they want to kill it then. Yeah, that's that's terrible. And, and terrible. then they want to sell the baby body part. Is that evil? Of course it is. Oh, OK, so they are evil then, right? What? So Planned Parenthood is evil, right? I would say they do some evil things, yes. Yeah, but but that would make them evil if they do evil. Is that right? See, this is the thing. People do evil things. Because they're but, evil. Well, no, I think that's too simple. I no, think it's people, just... people are, you can write them off too easily. When you say, it's like sometimes you write, watch these crime shows on television and, and then, and the, the host of the show goes, that person is so evil and should be put to death. Well, that person did something very evil, but that person is not evil in themselves. But it's the, evil in, them. it's the evil inside of them that caused them to do evil, right? Yes. Okay. But that doesn't make them evil it, in themselves. They do evil things, but they are not evil in themselves. But the spirit the, that made the a home in them evil is evil. In himself. The, the spirit of Satan that made a home in them is evil, right? Some people, sure. No, all people who do evil things have a spirit of evil inside of them. Am I right? I don't know. Some people do evil things because they're misguided. Can you be of God and still do evil? I don't. Uh-huh. I think the person, no, wait. I, uh-huh. I, I, no. Yeah. I think, I'm just thinking about my answer. What I'm, what I think is that a person can think they're of God and do evil. But I'm asking but you, can are, a person be of God it's like, and do it's evil? Like a, it's like a minister who molests children. That's they think they're of God and look at what they're harming children. But I didn't ask you if they thought that they were good. I'm asking you, could you be of God and do evil? I don't think so. I I don't even know that that's the right question, but I don't think so. I like that question. But why? Because it lets you call people evil? No, because it's the reality of what's happening in life, the battle between good and evil. But I think if you just make this dualism black and white, I think you're forgetting that there are a lot of gray areas in the middle. There are no gray areas. You yeah, either are. you're either for good or you either serve evil. Well, but sometimes you can get confused about what's good. Not if you're born of good, of good, reborn of good. You overcome the evil to the good. But I think I think you've learned a script and you're repeating it. But I think when you think <laughs> about it, I think when you think about it, there are gray areas, and sometimes people think they might be doing something good that isn't good do and they support, might do do you support same-sex marriage i i i'm a catholic so i i support gay people but i'm not a proponent of anything that goes against church teaching so you do not support same-sex marriage personally no i don't and why not 
Well, because I believe that God made man and woman. And so what's wrong with these people coming up with all this other crap, two men and two women pretending to be husband and wife and all that crap? What's wrong with them that they are doing those things? I can't explain that, and I don't think anybody can. Could it be of their father the devil? I don't think so. I think, that there's, I think that there are studies that show that there's something physiological that um, makes a person inclined to, the, to a same-sex partner. And I think it's much more complex than just putting it in terms of good and evil. Could it be that they uh, have been recreated in their mother's image so they have her identity and they feel like a woman and the women hate their mothers? I think I would prefer to go with whatever science is showing us. Rather I don't, than what I, God is showing you? But I've already stated what I believe. But science is wrong. What? Science is wrong. Well, what... Science hasn't really been able to say what what makes a person. They know what it is, but they won't say what it is. They're afraid. How to. do you how do you know that? That sounds like a conspiracy. Theory. I have met scientists, and they're afraid to tell the truth for so fear of losing. Which scientists have you met that have are afraid to tell? They're the afraid truth? To, for, of losing their jobs or being called racist and things like that. See, I think you generalize too much. I you, you think don't so? really have you don't have facts. You're just saying stuff because facts are not true. The truth is true. Facts Look is not true. Look at what book I'm reading right now. It's a book. Let's talk about truth. A guide for preachers, teachers, and leaders in a world of doubt and discord. There are such things as facts. Let me ask. So you're not <laughs> stunned at the corruption of Hollywood and actors? No. And I, what, what bothers me is the per pornography industry out in the San Fernando Valley. That bothers me. That's a multi-billion dollar tax paying entity that nobody even talks about that bothers me how about but, we're, we're about to run out of time here but how about the me too movement you know how those women use sex to get different roles in hollywood to make money you know, and then I they think, get what they want and then they accuse the man of molestation see, think, or raping I, them I, will you start at those I women i don't agree with i don't agree with your characterization of that at all why not because that's not really what happens Yes, it is. You, mean, you got grown blaming. women using their sex and their body to get positions. Oh. And once they get them, now they want to sue for money and put the man in jail. You're not stunned by that. I don't believe that that's what happens. Why don't you believe that? Because what, what happens, and this has been going on in Hollywood forever, that for women to get parts, men demand things of them and women and demand women, things of men too women they, refuse. they're like i'll give you my body if you give me a position they know no, what they're doing no that were you there are they so dumb they don't know what they're doing well i think in some cases that these, these men are in power i rest my case no these men are in powerful positions but that doesn't mean women have to give their body to get position then turn around and falsely accuse the men sometimes they didn't have any choice sometimes no, they, were they right. always had a choice no they not no you don't not when you're you don't have to give your body for a position when you're overpowered and raped which is what these women are no saying. <laughs> sister rose sister rose you've been in that convent too long if you believe that <laughs> uh no i think that you maybe need to get out a little bit more. I'm out there all the time. You, but you're saying things, but you don't really. Do you have you participated in any Me Too movement meetings or anything like that? I have not been in that meeting, but I interviewed them, and they are not honest people at all. Well, that's because they don't agree with you. But I think you should think about it. That maybe what they're saying is true. No, it's hard for women to tell the truth. Oh, see, but um. I think better of men than you think of women. No, I think the realistic of what women women are so I can help them overcome it. Oh, uh, see, I, th I just completely um, disagree with your vision of woman. Um, do you support the great white hope? What is that? Explain what you mean by that. The president, President Trump, do you support him? I'm not political. Oh, you I, don't vote or anything? We vote, sure. Did but you I'm vote for him? How, I'm not going to tell you how I vote. I I go Did you by vote for Catholic, the Great White Hope? I vote for Catholic social teaching. I vote for human dignity, for the common good, for solidarity, for the environment, 
These are basic principles. Oh, well, I rest my case. You voted for the president. You just answered that. Well, I didn't say I voted for him. <laughs> you said it without saying it, but I will, I'll leave that alone because I don't want to get you in but trouble. See, but you, you jump to conclusions, I think, and you make things out of what people say or what they don't say. But I... Um, but you just don't see like one of those women that would be voting for a Democrat because they are anti-God, they are anti-country, they are anti-family, they are anti-Constitution, they are anti-Second Amendment and First Amendment. I don't see you voting for those kind of people. I vote for, as I said before, for the, for the good of the human person, for the common good, for solidarity among people. I vote for the environment. Well, I re the great white hope. If I were near you, I'd give you a bump. Well, I'll give you a blessing. <laughs> Sister, I got to put you on the hot seat real fast. I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible, all right? Uh, all right. Um, is Jesus white? No. Who will win the box in a boxing match? Donald Trump or Joe Biden? I don't know. Have you ever had a gay thought? A what? A gay thought. A, a gay thought? Yeah, a lesbian thought. No. Who Have is, you? Who is more truthful, Kim Kardashian or Taylor Swift? I have no idea. Should feminists uh, support Islam? What does that even mean? Should feminists support Islam? I, I, you'd have to define your terms. You know how these feminine women, uh, feminists running around supporting Islam when we know Islam will chop your head off at, at the blinking of an eye. Should I, they support Islam? I think... I think that Islam, as it is lived in this country, I think that we should engage in a dialogue with Islam, and feminists should do that. Are you a feminist? I am. I'm Ooh, a Christian feminist. How are you going to be a, a nun and a feminist? Because I believe in the human person. I believe in human dignity and the dignity of woman. I asked earlier, you've already answered this, do you have perfect peace? I have deep meaning in my life, and I'm satisfied with that. Should America continue being a my, my, majority, white, majority white country? We are not a majority white country now. Should we continue to be it, though? We need to bring that back to being a majority no. white country before the country go to hell in a handbasket. Uh, we are a diverse country, and I hope we continue to be that That's way. That's not good. The country falling apart because of that. Well, that's what you say. I say we're stronger because of it. Is CNN fake news? I have no idea. Katy Perry tried to purchase a non Um, Did that offend you? Well, no, I wasn't offended. You were not offended? Well, no, there, there's a lot of church property that has to be sold. And eventually that's going to be sold to somebody. Will America ever become a socialist nation? Your guess is as good as mine. What I hope is, it becomes. I hope it becomes a more charitable, Christ-like nation. Are you hoping to become a socialist nation? N but I don't do politics, so I hope it becomes a more Christian and and charitable and loving nation. Does that mean socialism? Well, I you if, if you say so. I'm, well, I'm not talking about politics. Should are you saying you hope America become a social socialist nation? I didn't no, I don't say that. I say I hope Do you it support becomes... socialism? No, no, not per se. Oh, okay. And two final questions. What is a man? A man is a creature created by God. And what is a woman? A woman is a creature created by God, and together man and woman are human beings and we populate the earth and together we hold up the sky. But they're not equal though, right? Men and women are not equal, right? They are equal. But the, but the man came from God and the woman came from man. How could they be equal? Man and woman are equal. Did we are you equal, We are equal in our dignity. We are equal in our desires, in our hopes, in our longings, 
and especially in our dignity, we are complete, we have complete equity and we will not have peace until women are included in everything. No oh problems my God. Will, no problems will ever be you solved. You gotta come out of that convent thing. It, it ain't without, working over there. Without the involvement of women who are mothers, who care about their children, that's how we will solve problems and have peace. That's amazing. Did you have fun? Yeah, sure. It was nice talking to you. God you bless too. you. Sister Rose, I truly enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, God bless you. Let me know when you're going to air it. Absolutely. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, share. And we have all type of merch and all that going to get it done, what we're doing here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Sister Rose. Thank you, and God bless you. Stay well. I will. You too. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Next time on The Fallen State. Barack Obama inspired you to become a community organizer. Is that true? Absolutely. Are you surprised to see that blacks hate the Latinos and the Latinos hate the blacks? That was something complicated to navigate. But actually, I think that we have more in common than we often talk about. We have an incredible love for music. I think that this is a result, uh, this is a, as a result of white people and white privilege. White people and white privilege. It's about access and it's about power. If we work together, we're definitely stronger because we're the mi minority majority. Imagine the powers at hand right now. What's going to happen to them? Is America a criminal country? But most of people are not. bomb other countries and take resources and terrorize other people. White people came here, exploited this land that belonged to indigenous people in this country, and therefore, karma is a real thing. Your promise is that this is a free land for everyone. And here we are. I have, I have worked a lot on creating uh, local green jobs, um, renewable energy, for example. I have been here for over 25 years now, so this is home. <laughs> Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe, to assure the survival and the success of liberty. for watching the fallen state we need your continued support donate to my nonprofit here subscribe and like the videos here and tell everybody and their mama about the show <laughs>